Christopher Plummer and Julie Andrews brought The Sound of Music to life over 50 years ago, and it remains one of the most beloved films of all time. But The Sound of Music star Christopher Plummer hated making the classic Hollywood musical with Julie Andrews so much that he called it The Sound of Mucus and had to get drunk to film one of the most famous scenes. And here are the reason why Plummer truly hate her. The Sound of Music was a classic movie. In the early 1960s, Julie Andrews found herself at the brink of stardom, about to embark on her big break with the Disney musical Mary Poppins. It was during this time that she took on the role of Maria in The Sound of Music, filmed in Austria alongside Christopher Plummer, Charmian Carr, and the rest of the Von Trapp family. The Sound of Music, based on Maria Von Trapp's 1949 memoir, The Story of the Trapp Family Singers, takes viewers on a captivating journey through the Von Trapp family's experiences in Austria and their eventual relocation to the United States. While many are familiar with the film's plot and its unforgettable songs, there's a lesser-known narrative behind the scenes. As Maria, a young nun tasked with being the governess of the seven Von Trapp children, Andrews delivered a stellar performance alongside Plummer, who portrayed Captain Von Trapp. The character of Captain Von Trapp was depicted as a stoic and strict father, motivated by his love for his family and his homeland, Austria, which faced the looming threat of annexation by Nazi Germany. In this cinematic narrative, their relationship flourishes, culminating in a joyous marriage and the formation of a happy family. However, the reality of Maria's feelings towards the captain differed significantly from the on-screen fairy tale. In her memoir, Maria confessed that she was never deeply in love with the captain initially. While she had an affection for him, her true love was for the children she cared for. Maria's decision to marry the captain was driven by her deep love for the children, and over time, she eventually developed genuine feelings for him, stating that she had never loved anyone before or after the captain. The Sound of Music stands out as one of the most iconic movies of the 20th century, capturing the hearts of audiences worldwide. Directed by Robert Wise and released on March 2, 1965, the film became a cultural phenomenon. The musical not only earned critical acclaim, but also secured numerous accolades for its cast. Andrews, Plummer, and their fellow actors received multiple Academy Awards and Golden Globe Awards for their outstanding performances. The film's success was not only measured in awards, but also at the box office, where it claimed the number one spot. In fact, The Sound of Music held the record for the highest-grossing film for an impressive five years, surpassing even the renowned classic Gone with the Wind. Liesel was made up. In The Sound of Music, Liesel, portrayed as the oldest of the Von Trapp children, experiences a romantic subplot with a German soldier who aims to expose her family. However, this narrative diverges significantly from the real-life events involving the Von Trapp family. In reality, the eldest child was a boy named Rupert, and the character of Liesel was a creation of the writers to introduce additional complexity to the film's plot. Rupert, who was 54 and residing in Vermont at the time of the movie's release, pursued a career as a doctor. Interestingly, he often humorously identified himself as the real-life Liesel to his patients, attempting to connect with the cinematic portrayal of the character. Despite his claims, many patients were skeptical and perceived it as a light-hearted anecdote rather than an accurate representation of his identity. A father-daughter off-screen crush. In The Sound of Music, Christopher Plummer took on the role of Captain Von Trapp, while Charmian Carr portrayed his daughter, Liesel. Interestingly, rumors circulated about an off-screen romance between the two actors, despite a notable 13-year age gap and Christopher's marital status. This purported relationship became a subject of intrigue for fans and the media, although there was never any public display of affection between them. Adding to the saga, the cast, including Julie Andrews and the seven actors who portrayed the Von Trapp children, appeared on The Oprah Winfrey Show. During the show, Liesel, played by Charmian Carr, addressed the persistent rumors. 
She candidly admitted to having a crush on Christopher Plummer, praising him for being perfect and possessing an excellent British accent. However, she emphatically denied any physical involvement or romantic entanglement with the seasoned actor. Christopher Plummer didn't like the sound of music while filming. Despite the enduring admiration for his portrayal of Georg von Trapp in The Sound of Music, Christopher Plummer's sentiments toward the character and the film itself were not as affectionate. Notably, the New York Times reported in 1966 that Plummer humorously referred to the movie as The Sound of Mucus on more than one occasion. In a 2010 interview with the Boston Globe, he revealed that he felt a bit bored with the character of Captain Von Trapp. Expressing his dissatisfaction, Plummer remarked, Although we worked hard enough to make him interesting, it was a bit like flogging a dead horse. And the subject matter is not mine. I mean, it can't appeal to every person in the world. He further stated that it was not his cup of tea. As time went on, Plummer's critique of the film intensified. In 2011, he openly criticized The Sound of Music, describing it as awful and sentimental and gooey. According to Insider, the actor expressed his frustration, stating, It was so awful and sentimental and gooey. You had to work terribly hard to try and infuse some minuscule bit of humor into it. Christopher Plummer resented Julie Andrews. Despite the overall success and acclaim of The Sound of Music, the set wasn't immune to tensions, and Christopher Plummer's sentiments toward Julie Andrews stand out as a noteworthy example. While most of the cast and crew regarded Andrews as an angel, Plummer had a different perspective. He openly admitted to finding Andrews' niceness and gentle demeanor aggravating, going so far as to compare it to the sensation of being hit over the head with a Valentine's Day card every day. Christopher Plummer's aversion to The Sound of Music had a notable impact on his interactions with Julie Andrews during the filming process. Reports from IMDb and her moments reveal that Plummer found it challenging to be in Andrews' presence on set and held a negative view of her talents. In private conversations with other cast and crew members, Plummer referred to Andrews as Ms. Disney. This was a subtle dig possibly fueled by the fact that Andrews had recently starred in the Disney musical Mary Poppins and occasionally entertained the child actors on the Sound of Music set with songs from the beloved film. In hindsight, Plummer acknowledged the immaturity of his feelings and recognized Andrews as a great actor who carried herself like a true professional. Despite the onset tensions, the two performers developed a lasting friendship that endured for decades after the completion of the film. Not everyone could dance. While The Sound of Music showcased delightful singing and dancing, not all cast members were equally skilled in the art of dance. One standout example is Charmian Carr, who portrayed Liesel. Although Carr charmed audiences with her grace and beauty on screen, she wasn't a trained dancer. In fact, her dancing skills were quite basic. A memorable incident occurred during the filming of the iconic 16 Going on 17 dance sequence. Carr almost broke her ankle during the performance. This mishap was significant enough to necessitate a bandage on Carr's leg in the early versions of the film. However, interestingly, the bandage wasn't present in the 2005 remake of the movie. When questioned about the injury, Carr offered an explanation detailing the incident during the dance routine. Surprisingly, some viewers remained skeptical, finding it hard to believe that such an injury could occur during what appeared to be a straightforward forward dance sequence. The trip to the U.S. was different in real life. The cinematic portrayal of the Von Trapp family's journey to the United States in The Sound of Music crafted a compelling narrative of World War II refugees making a perilous escape. However, the real-life details of this journey, as recounted by Maria Von Trapp, differed significantly from the on-screen depiction. In the film, the family flees their home in Austria, traverses the Alps on foot to reach Switzerland, and eventually settles in the United States, where they embark on a new life as a traveling singing group. Yet Maria's first-hand account sheds light on the actual events. Contrary to the dramatic mountain trek portrayed in the movie, 
The Vaughn traps didn't navigate rugged terrains carrying suitcases and instruments. Instead, they opted for a more practical mode of transportation, a train. Moreover, a notable disparity emerges in the destination. While the film suggests a move to Switzerland, the reality is a journey to Italy. This choice was rooted in George von Trapp's birthplace, Zadar, which became part of Italy in 1920. As an Italian citizen, George's decision to relocate to Italy ensured that his wife and children also held Italian citizenship. Maria wasn't allowed to attend the premiere. Maria von Trapp, the inspiration behind The Sound of Music, faced a poignant exclusion from the movie's premiere. Despite the film being an adaptation of her memoir, The Story of the Trapp Family Singers, Maria found herself on the sidelines of the grand event. In a surprising turn of events, she even made a cameo appearance as an extra alongside her daughter Rosemary, yet this did not secure her a seat at the premiere. The snub extended beyond the movie premiere, with Maria also being absent from the initial screening of Rodgers and Hammerstein's Broadway musical. The producer's explanation for her absence was framed in terms of seat availability, claiming that the limited space was exclusively reserved for celebrities. This rejection amounted to a form of shunning, a stark contrast to Maria's pivotal role in shaping the very essence of the story. Without Maria's experiences and narrative, the movie would not have come to fruition, making the producer's failure to reserve a seat for her a notable oversight and a disheartening misstep the film versus reality. In the cinematic portrayal of Maria in The Sound of Music, she is depicted as an angelic figure who rescues the children from their military existence under the German regime. Captain von Trapp is portrayed as a stern man, using whistles to call his children, who line up as if in detention. Maria's entrance transforms their lives, turning them into a close-knit family. However, real-life dynamics differed significantly. Contrary to the film's narrative, Maria held the position of the head of the household, managing finances and attending to various family matters. The real George was not the strict character depicted on screen. Instead, he was a gentle and loving man who actively supported his wife and cherished moments spent with his family, particularly in the joy of making music together. While the decision to portray George as strict served the film's storyline, Maria revealed that the fictional depiction caused discord within the actual family dynamics. Additionally, Christopher Plummer, who played Captain Von Trapp, demonstrated professionalism in his performance, but off-screen, he grappled with alcohol-related issues. Plummer's acknowledgement of being intoxicated during the filming, especially at the music festival scene, sheds light on the challenges he faced. His penchant for taking Charmian Carr to Austrian bars despite their significant age difference became a notable aspect. In an interview, Oprah Winfrey asked Carr if she learned anything from Christopher, to which she humorously responded, I learned to drink. Plummer's struggles with alcohol contributed to weight gain and costume challenges during the production. Richard Dreyfus was almost cast in the movie. Richard Dreyfus, renowned for his breakthrough role in the 1975 blockbuster Jaws, nearly found himself in a different cinematic classic, The Sound of Music. In an unexpected twist, Richard was in contention for the role of Frederick, one of the Von Trapp children, and even underwent auditions for the part. The casting director was genuinely impressed by Dreyfus's acting prowess, recognizing the talent that would later make him a Hollywood icon. However, a surprising hurdle emerged during the casting process. Richard couldn't dance, a crucial skill required for the role. Despite his acting abilities, the inability to meet the dancing criteria became a decisive factor. In the end, the role of Frederick was awarded to Nicolas Hammond, who seamlessly embodied the character's essence, including the requisite dance sequences. The casting process for the iconic roles of Maria and Captain Von Trapp in The Sound of Music involved a myriad of considerations and potential candidates. During the film's pre-production, 
the filmmakers explored various options, including some of the most prominent actors of the time. Doris Day, a celebrated star at the pinnacle of her success in the 1950s and 60s, emerged as a prime contender for the role of Maria. Her name was part of a distinguished list that included the likes of Audrey Hepburn, Shirley Jones, Leslie Carson, and Anne Bancroft. The pool of talent considered for Captain Von Trapp was equally noteworthy, featuring Yul Brenner and Sean Connery among the contenders. Interestingly, the directors initially had their hearts set on casting Doris Day as Maria and Sean Connery as Captain Von Trapp. However, as the casting decisions evolved during the deliberation process, a change of heart occurred. Ultimately, the roles were awarded to Julie Andrews, whose performance as Maria is etched into cinematic history, and Christopher Plummer, whose portrayal of Captain Von Trapp is equally iconic. In retrospect, it is challenging to envision any other actors stepping into the shoes of Julie Andrews and Christopher Plummer, given the indelible mark they left on The Sound of Music. The real Maria's life story. The stark contrast between the real Maria's fascinating life and the cinematic portrayal in The Sound of Music unfolds as a captivating narrative. Maria's journey began in Vienna, where she faced the harsh reality of being orphaned as a child. Placed under the care of her violent uncle, he attempted to impose his atheist beliefs on her, dismissing the sacred stories of the Bible as mere legends during a pivotal moment at a Catholic church. A transformative encounter during a Sunday service, mistaken by Maria as a concert of Bach music, ignited her curiosity about religion. The eloquence of the priest's words swept her off her feet, leaving her overwhelmed and drawn to a spiritual path. This pivotal moment marked the beginning of Maria's journey towards the Benedictine Abbey of Non Bergen Salzburg upon her graduation from college. The turning point in Maria's life occurred when George von Trapp entered a convent in search of a governess for one of his daughters. Maria's education and teaching skills made her the chosen one for this significant role. Leaving the convent to work for the family, Maria had no inkling that her life was on the brink of a profound transformation. While the film portrays seven children in the Von Trapp family, reality unveils the presence of ten. Maria, initially not responsible for all the children, gradually formed deep attachments with each one. The familial bonds that developed went beyond the professional relationship of a governess, evolving into a genuine and heartfelt connection. For Maria, this unexpected journey became a search for love and belonging after a tumultuous early life. The Von Trapp family, once strangers, became the source of warmth and affection she had yearned for. The intricacies of George and Maria's love story, as opposed to the swift cinematic romance, unravel a narrative rich with complexities and nuances. In the movie, the on-screen couple quickly falls in love, creating a fairy tale-like union. However, reality painted a different picture. When Maria and George first met, there was no immediate romantic connection. Maria's affections were directed solely towards the children, and the notion of marrying George was initially met with uncertainty. In a stark departure from the film's narrative, Maria confessed that, had George proposed without involving the prospect of becoming a stepmother, her response would likely have been a hesitant no. It was the persuasive words of the nuns, emphasizing the divine intervention of God's will, that ultimately convinced her to take the plunge into matrimony. The real-life union of George and Maria materialized in 1927, marking the beginning of a journey that differed significantly from the romanticized version presented on the silver screen. Maria's role in helping the children discover their musical talents became a cornerstone of the story. However, the reality was that the Von Trapp children were already gifted singers and musicians when Maria entered their lives. Although their musical pursuits were considered more of a hobby at the time, in an intriguing contrast to the film, George, initially hesitant about his family's musical endeavors, did not want the children to focus on honing their musical abilities. Despite his belief that singing for others was a divine calling, 
he was reluctant to see them perform on stage. However, a turning point emerged when the family achieved first place in the Salzburg Music Festival in 1936. This triumph became a catalyst, leading George to reconsider his stance and embrace the idea of his family performing. The challenges faced by the Von Trapp family extended beyond their personal lives, delving into the economic hardships of the era and the geopolitical landscape of pre-World War II Europe. Financial struggles loomed large in the Von Trapp household during the 1930s, a period marred by the global economic downturn. George and Maria, once well off, found themselves grappling with the aftermath of the worldwide depression, which eroded most of their wealth. The family's economic downturn prompted Maria to take decisive action to alleviate their financial burdens. Maria's pragmatic approach included the dismissal of household servants and the strategic decision to rent rooms to lodgers, a move aimed at supplementing their income. Additionally, she implemented stringent budgetary measures, tightening the family's purse strings to navigate the challenging financial landscape. As the Von Trapp family's musical talents gained recognition, their fame brought both opportunities and challenges. The Germans, seeking to exploit their popularity for propaganda purposes, presented tempting offers to convince the family to stay in Austria. George faced pressure to rejoin the Navy, while his son Rupert was offered a prestigious position as a doctor. Despite the allure of these opportunities, George steadfastly refused to cooperate, recognizing the potential dangers that lay ahead. In a deviation from the film's portrayal, the family's journey to safety unfolded differently in reality. While the movie depicts a dramatic escape across the Alps, the Von Trapps opted for a more practical route, taking a train to reach their destination. Ultimately, their decision led them to the United States, where they sought refuge and embarked on a new chapter in their lives, free from the looming threat of political turmoil in Europe. Upon their initial entry into the U.S., the Von Trapps were granted six-month visas, reflecting the common practice of temporary stays. However, their return to Europe upon the expiration of these visas and subsequent Scandinavian tour revealed a strategic approach to avoid potential entanglements with the German authorities. The family's return to the United States, however, was not without its complications. Upon reaching American shores, they found themselves held up on Ellis Island, a symbolic gateway for immigrants entering the country. The Immigration and Naturalization Service initiated an investigation, scrutinizing the Von Trapp's intentions and duration of stay. During this probing period, the family faced a crucial moment. When questioned about the duration of their stay, they should have adhered to the standard response of six months in line with their visa terms. However, Maria, perhaps overwhelmed by the prospect of a new beginning in a land of opportunities, expressed her happiness at being in the United States and conveyed her reluctance to leave. The authorities sought clarification, and after a few days of deliberation, the issue was successfully resolved. The Von Trapp family was granted permission to enter the United States, allowing them to embark on their next musical tour and solidifying their presence in the country that would become their new home. That wraps up today's video. Now we want to know what you think. Are you a fan of The Sound of Music? And were you surprised to know Christopher Plummer hated the film that much? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed uncovering these fascinating details, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more intriguing insights into your favorite films and historical tales. Stay tuned for more captivating stories that bring history to life.